Welcome back to the Vedic Studios, and we're staying with our correspondents for now with the updates. So we'll dash off to the River State capital where we have Emmanuel Ray to give us an update of the situation there. Emmanuel. I don't uh, think Emmanuel okay. is ready. I, I, I don't think Emmanuel is we'll uh, quite quite as ready as he's made <laughs> out. So we'll, we'll wait. Uh, we'll wait. We'll wait for him. In a little while, we'll get back to him. Mm. Uh, we'll get back to him in All a little right. while. But in the meantime, maybe we should use the opportunity and introduce in our Abuja studios. Uh, we're being joined uh, in our Abuja studios at this point in time by the uh, Force Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Police, uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police. Frank Mba. Thank you so much for being with us. Can you hear us, Mr. Mba? I, I don't you hear think us? he can. He seems to be signaling that he cannot I think hear. Mr. Mba does, does not, so they so, they'll to, sort yeah. his audio out shortly. But yes. you know, you were saying about today. Yes, I was saying that there's a certain there's a certain uh, tendency for there to be some string running through the electoral process. In this case, talking about the various happenings, late arrival of materials, and a number of other things and what will eventually be the voter turnout. Mm -hmm. Because those who came out in the morning and left before the information came out that, oh, those, those uh, 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 electoral officers had now arrived and mm -hmm. they resorted to bell ringing mm -hmm. and a number of other things. That's what we're saying, like, the only thought crying. Yeah, the heart yeah, 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 When you look at the effect, you think about yourself, you know, you've gone out and you've, you've spent about three hours. You've gone home. You're not going to wait uh, Yeah, and then someone else says that, okay, yeah, so now finally they are I don't now know. around. Why, why is our process always this tedious? There's, there's, there seems to be that difficulty there. There's so, also the traditional difficulty that had been there all along, logistics. which is the logistics. issue of logistics. Mm -hmm. that, we use a compound, yeah, we that use that word logistics. But someone used, one of the guests here used um, a phrase, which I picked up, he said, um, process management. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there is something missing in, our manage, in the management of processes as regards the elections. Because yeah. you use four years to study, and they would always tell you the report of the last election is out there. So somebody sat down, looked at the entire process, and wrote a report. Now, whether the report highlighted the flaws, which were glaring, and most times they tell you that, oh, we noticed there were hitches. I mean, INEC officials, we noticed there were hitches here in the delivery of materials here, 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 and here. Now, consistent or persistent, it appears, those same hitches come up but again. Yeah, all yeah. So, <laughs> those and so it's, it's like those reports are written and then they are kept. That's if they're written. Because one of the guests we had was talking about project management, right, not process management. Then on the other hand, he goes, INEC is not a company. It's not like uh, you can sit tell your business development officer to look at it. What do you think? We hear that the, the dynamics are a bit different. Yeah, they're a bit different, definitely. And I'm, uh, I, I, I just want to see if and uh, now uh, ACP Frank Mba can hear us. Uh, ACP Mba, can you hear us? Yeah, good. Indeed, you can now hear us. Very good. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, in our Abuja studios. Assistant Commissioner of Police uh, Frank Mba joins us. He is the force public relations officer. Now, straight out of the straight out of the bat, of course, your own forte is security. So we'll start off by asking you what is the security situation report you can give us from across the country as of now? Generally across the country uh, the reports we'll be getting suggest that things have been going on smoothly in most of the police stations and in most of the wards, uh, as well as in most of the states across the Federation. However, of course, uh, we don't expect that in a kind of massive security operation uh, of this nature, involving the kind of logistics we, we, we are deploying, both by INEC and by the police and other security agencies, that uh, you will not have some hitches here or there. Uh, but on the whole, it has been a very good run, and uh, we remain cautiously optimistic that it will remain so, that all that have started well will, by God's grace, end well. Uh, but still on security, I will equally probably run you, run you through a couple of issues that uh, are already on my table. For instance, in, in one of the wards in Ibadan, two young men approached the wards armed 
Event, but thank God for the vigilance of the policemen on duty. They were chased down the, the, the line and um, eventually two weapons were recovered from them, a locally made pistol and a call to size uh, pump action. Um, those weapons have been recovered and investigation into that incident has already commenced. And of particular note is the incident in Edato South in Imo State, where uh, five young men were arrested for impersonating the Nigerian police uh, force. They, they, they came in into a police station adorning apparels uh, that looked so much like the uniform of police officers. Uh, they, they were spotted out immediately and they were taken into custody. Incidentally, in same Idato South, um, five other fake military officers were also um, arrested. Uh, they claimed to be Marine Navy wearing clearly what looked like the camouflage of the Nigerian military. They were equally arrested in Idato South. Um, These 10 suspects have been moved from Edato South Division to the state CID, where preliminary investigation um, has already commenced. Across the country, it's, 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 been, it's been okay, it's been commendable, um, but um, we're still collating and evaluating reports from the field. At this stage, uh, we're already changing our tactics because uh, before now, we've been focused more on providing security for escorting materials to the pooling centers, providing security in around the pooling centers. But now counting has commenced, so we are re-strategizing or we have re-strategized, and our focus now is on the collection centers, and uh, we are paying very special attention to what is happening in those areas where votes are being counted, and that uh, the collection centers, both at the local government level, and as we progress, the, the, the central collection centers at the state capital. Thank you, Ms. Sumba. Just a, a quick one. Earlier, um, in the midst of getting the updates from across the country, the we got a report about some of your personnel that were involved in an accident uh, around um, Guagualada on the outskirts of Abuja. What's the state of, uh, what's their situation now? Thank you for that show of empathy. Uh, 44 personnel of the Nigerian police force were involved in a very serious motor accident yesterday. Uh, they were deployed by, by the FCT command, of course, in, in pursuance to the discharge of uh, constitutional responsibilities as it relates to this ongoing election. Uh, unfortunately, on their way to their places of assignment, they had an accident somewhere along, along Guagulada Express Road. Um, it was a very serious accident. 44 of them sustained uh, injuries of various degree or varying degrees. Um, some, were, some of them were immediately rushed to the Air Force Hospital, some to the police clinic, the police hospital, the national hospital here in Abuja, the teaching hospital in Wawalada. Uh, but to, to, to the glory of God, 33 of them have so far been discharged, while 11 are still on admission. Um, five of them are currently admitted at the Gogolada Specialist Hospital. Three are on admission at the National Hospital. Uh, two are on admission at the police hospital at Area 1, Garki, while one is on admission in one of the private clinics in uh, private hospitals here in Abuja. The Inspector General of Police today uh, personally visited the, the, the men, empathized with them, and assured them that the force will not abandon them at this hour of their need. The force will take care of their bills and do everything um, that is humanly possible to support 
to support the medical doctors and every other person working behind the scene to ensure that they get back on their feet as quickly as possible. Okay, Mr. Mba, do you have any information about um, the report we're getting from Benue State, um, Gwe East, I believe, where um, it's reported that electoral materials in the ward were burnt down? That's coming from Benue State. I don't have that information now. Um, I have lots of lots of situation reports coming to me, but I don't have that specific information now. But as soon as I, 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 I have it, trust me, I'll share it with channels and uh, any other person that probably will be speaking to me on it. The, the, you, earlier in your comments, you talked about a massive security exercise for this election. And um, one of the things that were noticed by quite a lot of people was that they noticed that there was this aerial surveillance uh, in very many parts of the country. And then, of course, there's the, there was the military stroke, other forces deployments in many areas. Um, there was the issue of whether that ensured security or it scared away some people. Before you go to that, let me just ask you to talk us through that security deployment. When you said massive security deployment, what did that exactly mean? When we talk about massive deployment, it means that we are ensuring the maximal utilization of our manpower and resources. When we talk of massive deployment, we are not just talking about numbers. We are talking about details in planning and deployment. We are talking about the comprehensive nature of the coverage. We are talking about making sure we take care of all the little details. We, we cover every area, cover all the, the police centers, take care of, of the collation centers, take care of events around the street, protect lives and property beyond the police centers. That's what we mean by massive security. When we are talking about massive security, we are talking of very strong synergy between the police and all other law enforcement agencies. Strong synergy between the police and the people. And you can see that manifesting itself in so many parts of the country today. Uh, I have reports of so many parts of the country where the people who have turned out to vote assisted police officers, supported police officers in, in ensuring that they were able to actually, or that they are able to discharge their responsibilities effectively. And that's what we mean by massive, um, massive security deployment. It is not just about number, it's about style, it's about strategy, it's about details. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mba. We will come back to you um, certainly in the course of this discussion. But 